Each of those activities represents North American aviation at work today, and each represents a step toward the future. These activities had their beginning in a field like this, for this was North American in its early days. That field is now International Airport Los Angeles, one of the busiest in the world. Yet the descendants of its original inhabitants still frolic in a carefree fashion beside its busy runways. North American is a more extensive reality than was ever anticipated when the company payroll listed only a hundred employees. You remember those days, don't you? I should. I was one of the hundred you just mentioned. A lot of things have happened since those days, including the record we've set of building more airplanes than any other company in the world. And in doing so, we've established many milestones in the world of aviation. There was the T-6 trainer, for instance. It has been flown by more pilots than any other airplane in history and gave long years of service. It was the first of its type to score against an Axis submarine in World War II and the first of its type to shoot down a Japanese Zero. The famous F-51 Mustang acclaimed the best fighter in the same war. It racked up a lot of air race trophies afterwards and then returned to fight again in Korea. the equally famous B-25 Mitchell, the only airplane used on every front in World War II, and the first armed with a 75 millimeter cannon. When jet bombers came of age, there was our B-45 Tornado, the first four-jet aircraft to fly in the United States, and the first jet to be refueled in the air, and then the Sabre Jet series, airplanes which had a 14 to 1 kill ratio over the MiG in Korea. One model was the first American production plane to break the sound barrier. And the Navy's AJ-1 Savage the first airplane in the United States specifically designed to carry a nuclear bomb. There was also the FJ-1 Fury, the first operational jet to make takeoffs and landings on a carrier at sea. F-86D was the first to use rockets exclusively as armament. It was also the first interceptor requiring only one man for its operation. And the F-100 Super Sabre, the Air Force's first operational fighter to reach supersonic speeds in both climbing and level flight. A near-perfect mating of man and the F-100 is realized when the Thunderbirds official Air Force demonstration team weave intricate aerial patterns in their brightly colored Super Sabres. Presenting an example of perfect teamwork with the training and abilities of each pilot matched by the flawless performance of his aircraft, the Thunderbirds symbolize the freedom their service was created to protect. That doesn't give the complete list by any means, but it does give you the idea. Our company has a well-known record of firsts in the aviation industry, the result of a continuing tradition of keeping ahead. Originally, North American was concerned only with airplanes, and today, these continue to be the principal products of the Los Angeles division. For nearly a quarter of a century, airplanes have flowed in an unending stream through the many complex stages which progress from drawing board to completion. Research, design, 
production, testing. A multitude of specialized skills, abilities, experience and knowledge are at work here. All efficiently organized and effectively integrated. Because of North American's tremendous reputation and technological capacity, the Los Angeles Division was selected to design and manufacture the experimental X-15. Flights of the X-15 provide invaluable information for application to our further ventures into space. This is a vehicle designed to carry a man into the uncharted reaches above us and return him safely to Earth. North American pilots using zero length launch have proved that jet fighters can take off from shelters designed to withstand nuclear blasts. A new addition to the long line of Los Angeles Division aircraft is the T-39 Sabreliner, a twin jet utility airplane produced for the Air Force. And at the Los Angeles Division, the nation's most advanced aircraft, the V-70 Valkyrie, is taking form. Designed to fly at 2,000 miles per hour, three times the speed of sound, the V-70 will be capable of carrying tremendous loads. Its high speed can be maintained continuously over its entire range at altitudes above 70,000 feet. The V-70 represents a major breakthrough in aeronautical development. Regardless of the project, a vital ingredient is people. And the skills, imagination, and abilities of the people who make up the Los Angeles Division ensure continued quality of the organization's product. Here, as throughout the company, concentration is on the future. Manned airplanes of advanced design and manned vehicles for the exploration of space are in various stages of development. Not so very many years ago, these signs began to appear in the company's Los Angeles buildings. They designated small groups or sections. In some instances, no more than a few desks. When the company began to enter new fields, some of them never before associated with an airplane manufacturer. What has happened in the intervening years has proved the soundness of the vision and foresight which established these activities. Today, the group, the section, the few desks are large, separate, and individual operating divisions of North America. Many of them are located in the Los Angeles area. Each division is self-contained, and each is engaged in its particular and highly important field of work. There is another division located at Columbus, Ohio, and there are also supporting plants, such as this one at Neosho, Missouri, our manufacturing and test operations contribute significantly to one phase of the work in which we are engaged. In addition, the company has offices and representatives throughout the United States and throughout the world. We know that the fundamental law of motion, force equals time rate of change of momentum, is expressed in terms of acceleration. The airborne digital computer integrates accelerometer outputs and converts them to distance, the double integral of linear acceleration, and drift, the double integral of transverse acceleration. Understand it? Frankly, I don't, but these men do, as may you. To many employees at North American, such talk is the everyday language of communication used in their work. These particular men are engineers at the Autonetics Division of our company. This division has created guidance, control, and computing systems of extreme accuracy and reliability. Electronic and electromechanical products designed and manufactured here 
absorb a major share of the added burdens placed on man in this modern age. An age of accelerated demands which often exceed the limits of human capabilities. Among other important considerations is precision. In some instances, parts are produced to tolerances of 50 millionths of an inch. To maintain this extreme precision, it has often been necessary to create special tools and testing facilities. In other delicate processes, the amount of dust in the air is held to less than one twentieth of that found in pure mountain air. Here, in a laboratory atmosphere, production work is done on minute precision gears and parts, so tiny they can hardly be seen with the naked eye. Autonetics inventiveness and ingenuity has developed this extremely accurate automatic device which quickly determines the exact direction of true north in all weather, day or night. Not all products which come from this division are solely for military applications. Here is one that isn't. A computer that is portable, yet has capabilities of computers many times its size. One of the most widely publicized triumphs of the Autonetics Division is in the field of navigation. The inertial guidance system which made it possible for the submarines Nautilus, Skate, and Sargo to make the first submerged voyages in history through the uncharted waters beneath the ice of the North Pole. Autonetics armament control systems are in use in a number of military aircraft here and abroad. Even greater advances in many fields are in the making as they always will be. For like all divisions of the company, Autonetics is dedicated to not only keeping up, but keeping ahead. The Atomics International Division is truly international, since its installations are in operation not only in this country, but abroad. L'Atom International pionier dans l'utilisation créatrice de l'atom. Atomic International bahnt den Weg für schöpferische Atomnutzung. Genshi no sozo teki ryon no tame no senkusha. Atomici Internationali, pionieri in l'uso creativo dell'atomo. Translation? The slogan of this division of North American, Atomics International, pioneers in the creative use of the atom. This is a quiet place. The atom at work for peace is quiet. Inside the buildings, though, instruments are active. There is concentrated attention on the part of the men who are harnessing the atom for peaceful purposes. There, sustained atomic fission has been obtained in this nuclear reactor. One of several types created and built by Atomics International. Reactors for industrial application, medical research, and scientific exploration. And reactors for the production of electrical power. Atomics International has also developed a successful compact nuclear reactor weighing slightly more than 200 pounds itself and totaling 600 pounds when combined with its power conversion system, this space power plant will deliver an electrical output equal to that of one half million pounds of batteries. It is part of a program established by the Atomic Energy Commission to provide long life auxiliary electric power for use in satellite systems and space missions. And here is the world's largest privately owned hot cell, a facility for remote examination of radioactive materials. One of the most complex installations of its type. The hot cell is used for development of experimental reactor fuel elements and for testing irradiated reactor materials and components. Handling of the elements is done by remote control through mechanical arms.
In the application of this new form of energy, Atomics International has made, and continues to make, an outstanding and enviable reputation. It is one of leadership, of performance, and of progress. With, of course, mankind the benefactor. For this division is devoted to realizing the promise and vast potentialities of the atom. In the heart of the Midwest, North American Aviation's Columbus, Ohio division is a complete development and manufacturing organization with its own specialized activities and products with a background of technical and production accomplishment. Columbus has developed a variety of advanced aircraft, from jet trainers to modern all-weather Mach 2 attack weapon systems. Also, there is a steady flow of research and development projects that challenge the ingenuity and imagination of its engineers. Columbus production capabilities include a huge stretch wrap forming machine with hydraulic muscles capable of exerting a pull of more than 300,000 pounds. It is used to form a variety of aircraft parts. Diversification. A keystone of North American's philosophy is typified at the Columbus Division, now developing huge antennas for use in radio astronomy. One of these, for use in Navy research, will have a reflector large enough to hold six football fields and will be higher than a 60-story building. The Division also created this unusual geodesic dome, home of the American Society of Metals. Single-stage, fully automatic escape systems designed by Columbus engineers assure reliable ejection of one or two airmen from subsonic and supersonic aircraft at all altitudes and speeds, including less than stall speeds at ground level. These are but a few of the accomplishments made possible by Columbus Division teamwork as a part of a continuing goal the goal of contributing to the mastery of the new age into which we have entered. Nowhere is this age more in evidence than at the Missile Division. Its past contributions have accelerated the development of the entire missile industry. Pioneers in weapon system management Missile Division engineers and scientists provided solutions to the environmental problems of unmanned vehicles at supersonic speeds. A combination of vision and practical realism has built comprehensive and productive research and development organizations. In the Division's aerospace laboratories, center of years ahead studies in interplanetary exploration, Outstanding scientists probe the universe to gain greater knowledge of the space environment. From the weapon system designers came the GAM-77, an air-to-surface guided missile for the arsenal of Strategic Air Command. The missile division not only designs, builds, and tests the weapon itself, but also the support and field checkout equipment. It is capable of assuming full management responsibility for advanced projects. Rich in experience, skills, and manpower resources, the Missile Division contributes to the nation's strength as it enters the era of space. An era in which we now live, and one destined more than anything else we now know, to shape the pattern of our future existence. This is the symbol of builders of power for outer space. Slogan of the Rocketdyne Division. Here, as in all company operations, we are in the imagination business. It is one in which textbooks, even the most advanced, are but springboards into the rapidly unfolding future. This is the business at hand at Rocketdyne in its California, Texas, and Missouri facilities.
rocket engines, their creation, development, test, and production. Engines, in many instances, no larger than a sports car, generating more power than Hoover Dam. Capable of sending space vehicles and man farther beyond our earthly environment than was ever dreamed possible. Rocketdyne engines powered the first flight of a high-thrust United States ballistic missile, the Redstone. Also, our country's first intermediate-range ballistic missiles, the Thor and Jupiter. And our first intercontinental ballistic missile, the Atlas. Our first satellites, the Explorers, were put into space by Rocketdyne power. So was Pioneer, first of our moon probes, the beginning of similar projects which have continued ever since. Rocketdyne was the first organization to be awarded a contract for development of an engine with over a million pounds of thrust. This milestone is only one along the way toward a Rocketdyne engine with six million pounds of thrust. One capable of putting a payload of 55 tons into space. Not only that, entirely new types of propulsion systems have long been under investigation and research at this division and its supporting plants and facilities. One of these is a solid propellant facility at McGregor, Texas. Here, Rocketdyne engineers have developed rocket engines such as the one used in this zero-length launch of an F-100 Super Sabre. Mounted on its own mobile trailer, this combat-loaded F-100 needs no runway to get into the air. The system exerts a force more than ten times greater than the airplane's own powerful engine. Combined, they propel the plane to a speed of 275 miles per hour in less than four seconds. Launchings of this type vastly increase combat capabilities of such aircraft. Under development now are ionic and nuclear power plants. Other advanced designs are also a part of the division's program. Propulsion systems, which go by such names as solar, plasma, magnetohydrodynamic, arc thermodynamic. Quiet, efficient, and tailored to the exacting demands of another world, that of space. Like all projects, present and future, theory and development must be tested in terms of practical realism. These test stands are typical of many in different parts of the country. They are used in the evaluation of rocket engines, those still in experimental stages, and others which are ready for acceptance by government agencies. Specifications are rigid and exact. Each individual engine must meet demanding performance requirements before it is accepted. These include a certain minimum of operating time and development of a specified high amount of thrust. In addition, a wide variety of other response readings are necessary for analysis and determination of engine performance. Now, for a demonstration of power, tremendous power, held in leash, but nonetheless tugging at the outskirts of space. some of our activities, our enviable records, 
and our projects which go far beyond today. They are but a very few. We are proud of our company, its record, its reputation, its growth, and its progress. There are no unimportant people or unimportant jobs at North American. For it has been a combining of the efforts of many people in many kinds of jobs that has lifted North American from yesterday's alfalfa field to the more complex fields of electronics and fabrication manned aerospace vehicles, and nuclear power, rocket engines, and guided missiles. And in becoming a major contributor to these advanced fields of today, North American has prepared itself for success in the fields of the future.